This video documents how to convert the Academy Minicraft 1 to 350 scale Titanic kit from a static display model into one which actually sinks like the real Titanic did, including the breakup of the hull. This is a general guide and won't go into detail on construction of the kit's non sinking related components. For help building these portions of your model, there are excellent resources available online, like the Titanic Research and Modeling Association at titanic model.com. The Titanic kit we've used for all of our recent Titanic sinkings is the earlier Academy Minicraft kit, released prior to 1999. It usually runs between $50 and $100. You can find them on eBay and other online retailers. The kit contains 550 pieces and is not recommended for the beginning modeler, but it's also not the hardest thing we've ever put together. After you've attached the bilge keels, propeller shaft struts, and applied some bottom paint and sea deck trim, it's already time for your big bravery test, the hull cut. This will sever the ship into two pieces for the split effect. There's no going back once you commit to this, so plan and cut carefully. We chose to make our hull cut directly under the aft expansion joint. Now, wherever you decide to put yours, make sure to mark it clearly with a pencil, and then use your preferred cutting tool to do the deed. As you can see, we opted for a handheld rotary tool, and the result is a rather sloppy cut. We paid dearly for this later on, so you might consider a more precise tool. You should end up with a ship that looks a bit like this. No turning back now. Now it's time to start filling up that empty hull space with bulkheads. These will control the flow of water when the ship floods, ensuring a bow-down attitude during sinking. We cut our bulkheads from 99-cent plastic shoebox tops from Home Depot, but you can use any scrap plastic you choose. After some test fitting, we trimmed the bulkheads to size and secured them to the hull's interior using waterproof ceiling caulk. You can find it at your local hardware store. The number of bulkheads is up to you. We opted for four in the bow and two in the stern on this model. Since the stern section's interior will be visible during the breakup, we need to detail the interior. We'll start with the same shoebox plastic and craft some broken and shredded decks with scissors, sandpaper, and model cement. Install some machinery in the lower decks. Ours is made of spray bottle caps, razor guard plastic, and garbage ties. But you can use whatever you like. Glue the decks onto a bulkhead, give the whole thing a few shots of black spray paint, maybe a dusting of white to bring the texture out, and install it near the breakup zone at the forward end of the stern. The sides of the stern also need some broken shell plating. Now for this, we used thinner, more malleable plastic from some retail electronics packaging. Glue it to the interior of the hull at the split and paint it to match the exterior. For splinter decking, we used a plastic shirt collar stiffener. Trim it into a torn planking pattern and install it on the upper decks. After a few more details and a few coats of paint, we have a stern section that is suitably distressed. The purpose of float testing is to determine how much weight to put in your model so it will float properly. Now, if you don't put any weight in the model, it will capsize right away. So this is crucial. Remember that the stern section will also need to be weighted properly so it can float independently. Skip this step and you're guaranteed to capsize right away. This is frustrating. So make sure you ballast properly. To test your model in both integrated and separated conditions, use tape to hold the hull sections together, then remove the tape when you want to test only the stern. We used pennies to determine how much weight was needed and then replace them with lead ballast equal to that weight. When properly weighted, your model will float at a level slightly higher than the waterline. This allows some breathing room for later when you'll add the superstructure and funnels. Those add weight as well. Just remember to leave yourself access to the interior of the model somehow, in case you need to add more ballast later. Otherwise, you'll have a top-heavy model, which is, once again, frustrating. Test the flooding characteristics of the integrated ship, making sure that your ship will flood properly once you add damage to the hull at the bow. If your compartment bulkheads are too high, 
the ship won't sink. Next, test the stern section to make sure it will sink in the proper orientation. Water must be able to enter the forward end of the stern section, so make sure the bulkhead with the damage detail has a hole in it. For a proper vertical sinking orientation, air must be trapped in the aft end of the stern section. When the time comes to secure the poop deck, make certain to seal it tightly to prevent air from escaping too rapidly. But don't seal it completely, otherwise the stern will never sink. A pinhole is enough. To make iceberg damage, we heated an X-Acto knife and made a series of small cuts in the plastic hull on the starboard bow. Now, if you've ever seen any TV show, ever, you know what we're going to say next. If you're a young kid or you're not an experienced modeler, do not try this at home. You can get sent to the hospital very easily with a hot, sharp knife. There are other ways to make this hull cut. Seriously, don't get hurt for the sake of a model. It's not worth it. The two sections of our model Titanic are held together by a high-tension rubber band. Connected to the rubber band is a Quest Aerospace Q2G2 igniter wired to a remote firing trigger. The wire is insulated, so seawater doesn't bother it. When the trigger is pressed, the igniter fires, severing the rubber band and separating the hull sections. Number three funnel is located directly over the igniter. We cut holes in the interior to allow for the igniter smoke to pass through the upper decks to the funnel for a smoking effect. The plastic is protected from melting by thermal barrier tape and a couple tuna can lids. Just as a side note, this setup is not ideal and we don't recommend using it. We've had almost nothing but problems with it, so if you can make your Titanic split with another mechanism that's more reliable, we'd recommend that. It's included in this video to show you how we did it, but we wouldn't do it this way again. Once the remainder of the kit work is complete, with the ship fully detailed and the safety lines attached, fishing lines so you can pull the ship back up to the surface after sinking, you're ready for some test sinkings. Now, keep the cameras rolling, don't get bogged down by frustration, bring a crab net in case one of your safety lines breaks, and keep working until you get the shots you want. Your hard work and patience will pay off. Good luck, and make sure and send us a video of your efforts. Thanks for watching.